Hey, this is Damien from So Much Light. Today I'm gonna to break down what went into the writing and production of my new single, Heal. This is meant as like a way to learn more about the song if you enjoyed the track, or if you're a songwriter or producer yourself, maybe you can learn something by picking apart my process. I wrote Heal with the intention of making a song that is about achieving transcendence through altruism. It's about that kind of feeling of giving without having payment in mind, that in itself is a reward. There's some exchange of energy that happens, whether it's like karmic or spiritual or otherwise, you receive some level of benefit. And I wanted to write a song about that sort of as an exercise and a reminder to myself that that is why I enjoy making music in the first place. Let's start with the chords. Everything must point towards the same idea. The chords, melody, words, production. I'm just gonna do like the spoken word version of the verse. Think, do those chords evoke that meaning? How do I heal my soul? Deep inside, I don't feel whole. How do I heal the wound that opened up? How do I heal? It's this kind of flowery chord. There's, there's a happy, sad crossover that sort of happens. How do I heal could be a question in and of itself. It's a complete sentence. But then the addition of my soul is a deepening of the question. And to me, this movement downward kind of feels like a deepening of the idea. And then we just keep moving with that feeling until we get to the conclusion of the verse, which lands us in the tonic. So the tonic is like the home chord. The key of the song is A major. And the first time we ever hear that one chord is right here at the end of the verse. So not until we land on this A major chord do we necessarily know where home is supposed to be. And I feel like that ties in really well with the function of the verse, which is kind of like establishing setting. Now I'm gonna spin around. I'm gonna talk a little about the production that went into Heal. I wanted it to have like a traditional verse, chorus, verse structure, but I wanted there to be at all times an escalation of parts as they returned. The first time we hear the chorus, it's in this kind of like halftime feel where it's like a, I always use this, this uh, imagery of, of getting above the clouds. It's like when you're in an airplane and you like break through the cloud barrier and then you're sitting on top of all of it and it's just this like really angelic space. That's the image I have in a moment like this. And we burst. I liked starting the chorus like this in halftime because you can't really tell it's the chorus yet until it lands back in right here. You get to have the hook of like the feel change twice in the first chorus. Another thing I wanna sort of single out is this elegant baby track. <laughs> that's this little like high voice that's singing through the whole song. I like the idea of having like layers of hooks. A vocal hook that's singing this high up is great because it's a voice and your ear identifies it as a voice and it has this like human quality to it, but it's singing way above the range that I'm singing so it doesn't conflict with it as much. So this is what's called a sound font. I downloaded many, many packs long ago of sound fonts from some of my favorite video game soundtracks. Um, video game music is like maybe the biggest influence over my own arranging and compositions. There's something about that music having the task of evoking a space and mood, like a physical space. Video game music is really important because it serves the function of creating an environment. You know, when we were back in the day, like playing on Super Nintendo or PlayStation on a two-dimensional screen, it doesn't feel very immersive. Um, 
by nature of the medium. So the music is doing a lot of heavy lifting. It's like bringing us into the space. Uh, my brain just kind of <laughs> formed around video game music in a big way. I think we can all relate to that. It's deep, deep, deep in my head. I like to really lean on that because I feel like it's, uh, you know, a unique feature of having grown up as a millennial. Okay, so how do we elevate to the second chorus? Because this time when we come into it, it's not gonna be halftime. It's just gonna hit right away. So we need to make sure that feels good and doesn't feel like underwhelming. So what happens is at the end of the second verse, things get very, very tiny. They start to bit crush, which is another thing that harkens back to like this sort of video game music-y feeling where it starts to sound like it's shrinking, shrinking, shrinking onto like a Game Boy or something. And we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And what's actually happening is like the stereo image of our left and right ear is narrowing very gradually. And then it's gonna open up. So here's that like Armageddon meteor hitting the earth moment. And we know the chorus is coming. Everybody knows the chorus is coming because the bridge just happened and we haven't gotten a chorus. But now we have a key change. It's kind of the same halftime feel as the first chorus. So that, I was really proud of this fill. I'm gonna just like highlight it for a moment. So it actually has um, like Ableton's resonator on it so like these drum hits are actually like lightly tuned onto notes and we it's a long chorus so we need more escalation so a couple things happen these little buddies come in they have that little stutter in there there's also these little choir boys that are singing through every chorus that I think are like essential to the feel of this song and making it feel evocative of like some kind of religious tradition. Ah, such a beautiful sound. I try to get away with hiding choir samples in like every one of my songs. It doesn't always fit, but it very much fit in this one. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for watching this whole video. I hope you learned something. I guess like the main takeaways I learned from this myself because it's always a learning process. I don't at all claim to be like a master of this medium. In every song I make, I learn different things and I try to be learning different things. I've never really been as particularly mindful about chord choices in direct relationship to like lyrics and melody. My good friend, uh, Louis Lowe, you have to check him out. Um, his project Lou is amazing. He helped me with this song. He had some amazing insight into the chorus. Stuck in a loop, I lost myself. Deep down, I already know how. That chord was Lou. And this one too. Little by little. Get caught in the middle, Lou. So huge shout out to him for just really helping me push the chorus a little harder and more like a more like Disney theatrical. So yeah, seek help. Why use one brain on the thing? You have like hopefully many friends who are doing this with you who can like provide insight help elevate your craft. Cool, and that's what I'm trying to do. So if you have any questions, like hit me up in the comments if there's anything you liked or wanted to hear, uh, let me know. All of these stems are available on my Patreon. Everything, everything isolated, all of the bass, all of the drums, all of it. Check me out on Patreon, check me out on Instagram, all that, listen to Heal, bye.